Dear viewers, welcome to the very first video I am uploading on my new channel, Bins Nakama Plays. I am glad that you found your way here and I'm hoping that after this video, you'll feel like sticking around a bit longer. Today, we'll be talking about shapes with a Z. That's right, the creator dropped the .io part and the game is now simply called Shapes, but it's still the same factory builder we all know and love. Now, in a way, I am going to assume that you found your way here after my video series about uh, Buttman on my other channel, which was my first version, True Make Anything Machine, I created for this game. While it felt like an extreme achievement to create the Buttman factory, I strongly felt like it was more of a proof of concept than anything else. So I decided to make a version 2 that's better, faster, harder, stronger. And so, ladies and gentlemen, may I present Bustman. This is the Bustman V2. Bustman stands for... Hold up, let me find it. There we go. Stands for Binz's Ultimate Second Totally True Make Anything Machine. Um, the Bustman is... Uh, has an extremely fast analysis module and also this machine is capable of outputting 200 items per second, outputting 200 shapes per second. This will be the first video in what I reckon will also be a small video series, although at this point I am not sure yet of how many parts it will consist exactly. I would say join me on my journey and let's find out together, shall we? Now. Before we can talk about the factory itself, I feel like we need to talk mods. Since my last video series, Shapes has come with a major update, which is the mods update. Mods are basically extensions to the base game that you can simply install, in this case for free even, and they come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes. Pun intended. Mods range from small additions, like perhaps a small extra tool that makes the game more user-friendly or something, over extra buildings, new buildings, over tools that make the game easier and can therefore be considered borderline or even outright cheating, over extension packs that influence the gameplay so drastically that you could arguably consider it a new game altogether. If you want to discover mods for yourself, you can go to shapes.io sorry shapes.mod.io and download them but there are a ton more if you simply go to the discord server and ask around i currently have little under 20 of those mods installed and i would like to highlight a few of them for full disclosure okay first and foremost in the pursuit of a tmam in this game the floating free play mod by Skimner Fi is an absolute must have if you ask me. It modifies the hub output signal for free play for free play levels 27 and up so that the shapes may now include floating quadrants like the logo shape or the rocket shape. Sh rocket shape. So I want to issue a huge thanks to Skim because as I understood actually he kind of custom made this mod on my request so i am deeply thankful for that it has definitely made me enjoy building this machine a lot more because you can now output floating shapes to the hub and make the game level up that way and i find incredible satisfaction in hearing that pling sound when the game levels up knowing that it can only do that if you have a tmam behind that so to all aspiring T-Man builders, three words, floating free play mod, indispensable. The next mod I would like to highlight is Atrium's Sandbox mod. And boy, this mod is a cheat if there ever was one. It adds this uh, toolbox in the bottom left. Let me get it on screen. There it is, this, uh, this sandbox toolbox in the bottom left of the, of the screen where you can simply choose a custom level and also set custom upgrade tiers for all of your units with 
with a simple click of a button. All right, so I can simply, uh, I'm going to fast forward some levels here. You can see how it works, All right? So now we are at the first 200 item per second level. And I can do the same thing for my, uh, my upgrade tiers. I am at uh, tier 78, I will get back to that. Um, now regarding this mod, I strongly, strongly, very strongly advise against using it if you are not a seasoned player just yet. If you haven't reached level 27 yet, please do yourself a favor and don't use this mod. If you haven't gotten to a point where you've had at least a few million blueprints on stock, please don't use, th use this mod. If you haven't organically reached tier 15 or 20 in terms of upgrades, don't use this mod. And the reason is because it can seriously kill, take away a lot of joy and especially experience that you get in terms of figuring out efficient designs, finding out what works better and what doesn't, etc. Even if it comes down to making the machines that you need in order to, you know, your upgrade shapes in order to level up your tiers, you gain a ton of experience by doing that organically for a while. So do yourself that favor and do not rely on this mod until you feel like you have earned it, so to speak, right? Because this mod is definitely super cheaty and I decided to use it because, you know, I kind of grew tired of having to supply ever increasing amounts of upgradable shapes to the hub for literally days on end. And also it was very useful for me, firstly, to be able to skip forward to the point where the hub starts requesting 200 items per second shapes, as you saw me do just now, and especially to also be able to go back levels because sometimes I noticed I, I you know I experienced the hub would request a shape that gave the machine trouble and thanks to that mod I could revisit that level and therefore that shape for testing purposes very useful um, for full disclosure as I said I am running this game with everything upgraded to uh, tier 78 and that is a good tier because it gives you a nice factor 12 multiplication, meaning that my belts run at 24 items per second. And at the same time, the tier is not excessive, right? While you might be inclined to think that higher tiers are always better, that's actually not true counterintuitively. If you boost your tiers too much, some of this game's units start choking, actually, because they can't cope with the input anymore, and all kinds of weird stuff starts happening where your ratios might get skewed, and suddenly you might notice that a factory that used to sail smoothly at lower tiers start behaving in weird ways, especially uh, susceptible to this are the belt reader and the storage units you know I, I i don't know the details i don't want to get into the details either but if you tear up too much um you know weird stuff starts happening to your factory and uh i, I found out that tier 78 strikes a nice balance and that's what i went with now, another gimmick that comes with this sandbox mod is the item spawner build. All right, let's find an empty spot on the map. There we go, for example, here. So the item spawner building uh, is simply a unit you can place on the map. And if you attach a constant signal to that, let's say red die or something, then you immediately get a full output belt of that um, of that signal. So, in the Discord community, there is a general consensus, you know, an unspoken agreement to use this item spawner exclusively on input belts. They must have a constant signal feeding them, which means that any one item producer can only output any one thing at the same time. And 
you can only use it to spawn either paint of any color that's not gray or an unpainted one layer shape. And I decided to uh, use the item spawner for this machine because otherwise my frame rate would really drop below 10 uh, and that was just very annoying to work with. So I decided to, to use the item spawner. I have it right here. And as you can see, um, those, those, the, the consensus is respected. So I am only using the item spawner to spawn uh, paints and uncolored shapes, right? And these signals are constant signals, so they are not dependent on the actual shape that the hub might be requesting. Now, apart from the floating free play and the sandbox mod, I have a dozen of so, a dozen or so of so-called QOL or quality of life mods. QO, QOLs are mods that don't directly affect the game or the gameplay as such, but they increase user friendliness, let's call it. I have, for example, I have these little note buildings here that allow you to display pieces of text in game. Um, there is also this custom pin thingy in the top right corner, which allows you to you know, set a custom, pick a custom shape, and then you can have it displayed in the in the left column right here. Um, as you m may have noticed, I have a blue background, which is also, you know, fed by, fed by a mod, and a lot of stuff like that, okay? Um, another interesting of those QOL mods is uh, the Suppress Analytics mod by Denger, which I like very much. If you've watched previous videos of mine, you probably noticed that I used to have to deal with sporadic screen freezes of a few seconds each, in which the game took its time to, I don't know, calculate something in the background or whatever, I don't even know. Anyway, um, this mod irons that kink out, and these types of screen freezes are luckily a thing of the past for me. And there is one final mod that I want to talk to you about today, and it is an absolute heavyweight for everyone attempting to build a TMAM as well, and everyone dealing with wiring setups of a more complex nature in general. And that is the Pause and Step mod by Fatcat X. I wouldn't have been able to build this factory without that mod, and while demoing this machine in upcoming videos, you will see me make use of it a great deal. What it does is, with the click of a button that you can choose, is pause the game like so boom the game is paused and then with the click of another hotkey you can advance the game by one tick like so click 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 all right and that feature is a major major help for setting up your wiring layer I remember doing an entire video about the complexity of ticks on the wiring layer and how it's a huge and confusing obstacle to wrap your head around in the pursuit of efficient wiring setups, mainly because the ticks move so much more faster than your eyes do, right? Well, with this mod, you get the time to actually see what's going on, and in my case, that was really indispensable. We will still get to that in the following videos. I almost want to wrap it up for today. Today was an introduction and I felt that the mods update for shapes needed its proper time in the spotlight because it's a pretty radical update and the mods have definitely contributed to this new factory and the way it turned out. So a quick overview of this machine's characteristics. This is the Bust Man version 2. I had a version 1 before and was intending to do videos about that as well, but it turned out that I preferred getting to work on the version 2 instead, and now that that's done, I decided to skip the version 1 altogether. As you have been able to observe in the meanwhile, the Bust Man is capable of leveling up at 200 items per second, and it consists of 6 identical machines. Just a sec, let me zoom out. 
There we go. So it consists of six identical machines that will output a full belt each. Now at tier 78, uh, six output belts translate to uh, only 144 items per second. And therefore I have this little uh, buffer system in place which lets the shapes accumulate for a bit and then releases them all at once to surpass that 200 item per second threshold for just long enough that the hub registers that input and levels up. The leveling up happens in little over two minutes, depending on the exact frame rate. And because of that, I want to hereby officially claim the world record for the fastest 200 item per second TMAM built in shapes. Plenty of stuff to talk about regarding this machine and how it works, so I hope you're excited for the next video. I hope you're eager to learn more about the BustMAM V2. And consequently, obviously, I hope to welcome you again soon in part two. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.